Hi, I'm Mike, Santa Tips Mike, and today I have something really cool to show you guys that I think you're gonna like. So by now, everybody knows that Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield removed over half the amount of Pokemon in the Pokedex. A lot of people were upset by that, and although some of the new Pokemon are really cool, like Score Bunny, they don't exactly replace the ones that we've had for years and have really gotten to know well. But ever since Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield have come out, mods have been popping up left and right that have been adding back Pokemon to these games. But last night, the biggest mod of them all has finally come out. So the creator, JLBW96, released a Sword and Shield mod publicly that adds back all of the Kanto Pokemon that were cut from Sword and Shield. So that means all those cool cut Pokemon like Dragonite, Scyther, Alakazam, they're back in with this mod. Let's check it out. Alright my friends, so we're in game right now and I have a box full of the first 30 Pokemon in the Kanto region Pokedex. Now there are some really cool things in here like the Bulbasaur and Squirtle families which currently right now are unobtainable in Sword and Shield, but this whole row of Pokemon that are just black Pokeballs, these are the removed Pokemon that are now modded in. Now you can tell right off the bat this mod is kind of a work in progress, it's not exactly done yet if the black Pokemon all placeholder sprites aren't a good enough indication, but as you can see right here, we have Weedle, we have Kakuna, we have Beedrill that looks like a Pikachu. Yeah, work in progress, guys. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, all these Kanto Pokemon that originally were not in Sword and Shield have now been brought back into the game with this mod. How cool is that? We have Rattata back in these games. Now, if you played through Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, you're probably going to recognize that these Pokemon were kind of directly taken from Let's Go and put into Sword and Shield. The textures don't really match up very well with the Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Let's take a look at this Clefairy over here. You can see how this looks very different stylistically than the uh, Nidoking right next to it. The Pokemon from Let's Go version to me look a little bit more cartoonish and the ones from Sword and Shield with the textures and everything they look a lot more realistic. Now actually seeing these two side by side I kind of prefer the way Pokemon look in a Let's Go version rather than the more realistic approach they took with the Sword and Shield textures. Now let's actually take a look at their stats and everything. Let's check out their summary over here. So we can see it, Dugong Summary, it has its typing and everything, that's all good, but its stats and its ability are still missing. Again, work in progress. Now, not only does this mod bring back all the Kanto Pokemon, but it also brings back their shiny forms as well. So we can see here we have this beautiful blue and purplish Porygon. This is definitely one of my favorite shinies of all time. And of course, you can't forget the legendaries Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, as well as the dragon Pokemon that I'm kind of shocked were cut from Sword and Shield. Dratini, Dragonair, Dragonite, they're all here. So like I said a little bit earlier, this mod is definitely a work in progress. The cries are gone, the sprite icons are gone, but I do want to test out some of these Pokemon in battle. So I'm going to grab a few of my favorites. I'm going to grab Scyther, Staryu, Dragonite, Articuno, Alakazam, and a shiny Nidoking. All these Pokemon, I'm really surprised they got cut. So many of these things are iconic, but I guess you can't bring them all over to Galar. Now first things first, I want to see if the evolutions actually work. I think the easiest way to do this and test this out is going to be using a stone on a Pokemon that can evolve with it. So let's try evolving this little Staryu thing. And it looks like it's going to work. What? Staryu is evolving? Oh, there we go. There we go, it's wiggling, and it turned into a Starmie, and that actually looks flawless. I don't really see anything wrong with that. Okay, so to celebrate my new Starmie, we're gonna jump into a battle and try to beat something with this Starmie. Probably not gonna work out too well since we're only level 1 and our stats are bad? Okay! <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen a little bit. So, Pokémon that don't fly right now Currently, when you send them out in battle, they're just gonna appear in the air floating for a good five seconds, and it looks a little goofy. Ah, yes, that great Starmie moveset of Tackle and Harden. Starmie used Tackle, how does this look? That actually looks really good! I was expecting a glitchy animation or something, but no! It really looks like the Sword and Shield stuff ports over flawlessly. Let's actually teach you some better moves than Tackle. Let's get away from this battle. Actually, on second thought, I should have thought this through. None of these Pokemon can learn any of these TMs or TRs because they weren't programmed to do so. So instead, we're going to swap and use a different Pokemon. Unfortunately, I'm going to put you away for now, Starmie, but let's go ahead and use Scyther, one of my favorites of all time. 
Oh, and I actually noticed something kind of interesting. So I took all these Pokemon out of the PC, and now their stats, other than, you know, Starmie over here, look pretty good. And the ability, for Starmie at least, is also back. So maybe because I did have to do some weird stuff to get these Pokemon in the game. Maybe if you naturally generate them in the game, like I did with Starmie over here, they'll get their normal ability. That's kind of cool how Starmie now has Illuminates. All these other guys, though, they still don't have any abilities, but they look like they have their stats back. All right, so with that being said, let's send out our Scyther against this Rookadee, and there we go. See, that looks perfect because Scyther hovers in the air a little bit. So that looks fine. But like I was saying before, you can really see in the battle right now that Scyther looks very out of place compared to that Rookie D. All it really needs is an updated texture or something, an updated shader, and it'll fit right into the game. But it definitely looks a little bit out of place with Sword and Shield's art style. But that's not really something that bothers me at all. I'm very happy to have these Pokemon back in general. So let's go for X-Scissor and see how that looks coming from Scyther. Again, that looks pretty good. The animation is nothing crazy, but that does look pretty good. It's not doing like a weird little T-pose, it actually, it works. And yay, Starmie got to level 2. Now while there is a lot of stuff in this mod that does work, there also is a lot of stuff that doesn't. So I know you guys are going to ask me to do a lot of this stuff, so let's go ahead and try it out right now. First things first, let's try putting these Pokemon in Pokemon Camp and see what happens. And it's not going to happen today. Next up, let's try healing in the center, because, you know, Scyther got a little tired after that battle. Yes, I would love to rest my Pokemon. I'll take your pee. <laughs> and finally, you know what we have to do. We have to try Dynamaxing these Kanto Pokemon. Come on out, Nidoking. And there it is, floating up in the air once again. All right. Now, it has the Dynamax option for us, but I know this is not going to turn out that well. Let's try going for Max Quake. And... Yeah, it just stays like this. Like I said, guys, work in progress. Now this here is my buddy, Mr. Happy Policeman, and you want to know why he's so happy? Well, let me show you. Wait a second, wait a second, that's not what I thought was going to happen. I tried changing his team to have Kanto Pokemon because I figured it would work and... He has an egg? <laughs> wait, this video is taking a whole different direction now. This man is straight up using an egg in the battle right now. Oh, I guess this is what's going on. So, I gave him five other Kanto Pokemon, I don't remember exactly what they are right now, and I left his Snorlax on his team because you know it was already Kanto. But I'm guessing the game doesn't want to let him use the other five Kanto Pokemon because normally they're not in the game, and since this battle is a double battle, you can't only send out one Pokemon. So I'm guessing when the game doesn't have a second partner to send out for you, it just sends out an egg. So what I'm going to try to do is actually target this Snorlax over here. It's going to Dynamax. Yeah, it's definitely going to Dynamax. And I'm going to see if I can knock out the Snorlax and leave the egg alive. I really... Actually, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't do anything. Yeah, maybe I'll just burn the turn. I'll go for Megahorn on Articuno and I'll go for Reflect so I can see if this egg does anything at all. I don't think it's going to do anything. Maybe it'll go for Struggle, but this is actually kind of interesting. So unfortunately, I can't give Trainers Kanto Region Pokemon, but we do get to see this, which I was not expecting at all. Alright, so he's got his uh, Gigant uh, Dynamax Snorlax. This isn't the Gigantamax form. We're going for Reflect, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to attack myself. Now, his turn. He's going for Max Quake. That's not going to hurt Articuno at all, but it is going to do some damage to Nidoking. And, oh, the egg's not going to do anything at all? Oh, that's so disappointing. What if I knock out the Snorlax? Let's go ahead and try to do that. I'm not going to use moves like Earthquake, because that hits everything on the field, and I really don't want to touch that egg. I want to see if I can just get him to use that egg. Look at Articuno go. I'm so proud of him. It's so cool using these Kanto Pokemon in Sword and Shield. That Megahorn almost did it, though. All right, this is it. Moment of truth. We're going to go for the Ice Beam Megahorn combo on that Snorlax, and let's see if it just finishes the battle right up right there, 
or if that egg is gonna do something. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but I'm really intrigued to see what's gonna happen here. This is what I love about doing weird stuff to the game. You expect one thing to happen, I was expecting Kanto Pokemon to come out, and we got this whole special thing going on for us right now. Oh, that Starmie's gonna level up a lot. Oh, the battle just ends, but Morimoto, you still have an egg out on the field. What are you doing? Now, there's also one more kind of cool secret thing I want to show you guys right now. This will be more relevant in the future. So basically, when you transfer your Pokemon from previous games up to Sword and Shield, when they come over to these games, they're going to have special little icons. So this Dratini right here, I made it appear like it came from Pokemon Red version. So when you transfer something up from Red version, it's going to have that little Game Boy icon. And in the menu, it's also going to say it traveled across space and time to rejoin me from the Kanto region. How nostalgic. Now this Dragonair here thinks it came from Pokemon Fire Red version and unfortunately there's no icon there. It'd be kind of cool to see like a Game Boy Advance icon but unfortunately nothing like that over there and on the menu it just says it traveled across space and time to rejoin me from the Kanto region. Nothing about nostalgia. And last but not least the third Kanto region game I'm not counting Heart Gold and Soul Silver because when you transfer Pokemon from from those games, it says it came from Johto, even if you caught it in the Kanto region. But anyway, for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee version, it actually shows a little Pikachu icon in the bottom of the screen. I'm actually kind of a little disappointed that they don't have a separate Pikachu and Eevee icon, but it's whatever. And once again, when you come to the Met location data, it says it traveled across space and time to rejoin me from the Kanto region. Although honestly, I'm not quite sure how it's space and time because these games are both on the Nintendo Switch. Alright my friends, and that's gonna wrap up this mod. So how cool was that? Seeing all those Kanto region Pokemon back in Sword and Shield. I know behind the scenes right now there's this big mod being worked on that's gonna bring back everything into Sword and Shield, and I can't wait to see what that's gonna be like, having every single Pokemon ever back into Sword and Shield. If Game Freak doesn't want to do it, the fans are gonna do it, and I can't wait to see what that mod's gonna be like. I can't wait to have Cyndaquil back, I'm gonna be so happy. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content, and my friends, I'll be seeing you in the next one.